this lesson I'll be looking at a first-hand investigation about the heats of combustion of alkanoles. Now if you remember, the heat of combustion is the amount of energy released by one mole of an alkanol when it's burnt or combusted. So, we're looking at school laboratory calorimetry. If you remember, calorimetry is a way of measuring the heat of combustion. And this is the setup here. So, our aim for this experiment is to determine and compare the molar heats of combustion of simple alkanols. Now just to quickly recap, what we have here is our apparatus. So we have a stand with a clamp which is holding a flask here. In this case it's a conical flask. And this is our calorimeter. We also have a thermometer to measure the temperature difference in the water. And the water will be of constant volume and we measure it before we do the experiment. Now we have to use a draft shield because we're burning the alkanols in this little spirit burner and if we have too much draft or wind you'll have less reliable heat source so therefore the, the temperature change won't be as constant as it should be. So that's our basic calorimetry apparatus for this experiment. Now, the alkanols that will be used, that are generally used, are methanol, ethanol, and one propanol, and sometimes one butanol. And there's a few safety precautions. If you remember, alkanols are flammable, okay? So we need to store the alkanols away from potential ignition sources, and we have to wear safety goggles at all times. Now, let's look at the heat transfer considerations of this setup. Now, what we have here is our setup with our oil burner at the bottom with a set amount of alkanol. And the wick will burn that alkanol and the heat will transfer to the water where the temperature will rise. But what we need to consider are a few experimental factors. Now, the wick of the flame should only just touch the lower surface of the flask. So, as you can see here, it's just touching. And for every time that you do this, for the different alkanols, methanol, ethanol, propanol, etc., make sure that that wick is at exactly the same height for each experiment. The setup should be shielded from drafts, so remember, you need a heat shield here. And a good source of that in the school laboratory would be a heat mat, but anything that's non-flammable and that's heat resistant would work for that and you'll have to stir the water constantly to uniformly distribute the heat so that you're not just getting heat at the bottom but that it goes throughout all of the water. But just remember, never stir with a thermometer because you might break it and you'll get the spillage of toxic mercury, okay? Now let's look at the variables which we need to control in this experiment. Now for each alkanol tested, the vessel being used as the calorimeter, which is either a conical or flask or a beaker, or whatever the, your laboratory has, must contain the same amount of water and be at the same initial temperature. The distance between the calorimeter and the flame of the spirit burner must remain the same. So every time you change it over for different alkanols, make sure you measure that. And the burner must be centred, okay? So we don't want the burner over here or over there. We want it right in the middle of our calorimeter every single time. So the method, we measure the initial mass of the spirit burner with the alkanol inside, and we also measure the initial temperature of the water. And make sure you keep good records of all these things. Now we ignite the wick and we heat the water flask until it increases by 10 degrees Celsius. So you have to watch that increase in temperature and make sure you don't run away and do something else because it has to be exactly or as close that you could see to 10 degrees as possible so that you have consistency. Now when you finish, uh, you extinguish the flame and you weigh the alkanol and the spirit burner. But obviously make sure that it's cooled down enough to touch before you try to weigh it. And then you repeat the procedure for the other alkanols and as I said, make sure that you take good records and keep, keep a good record of what you're doing. So for validity, you could use an electronic thermometer or a thermometer with smaller scale divisions 
to improve accuracy. Okay, now that's not usually possible in a school setting, but if you wanted more accurate results, this is a way that you could do that to improve the experimental procedure. And to make this experiment more reliable, you could repeat the procedure several times and that would ensure more reliability. But sometimes in the school you don't have time for that. But with experiments it's always better to repeat them to get more results, more data, more reliable. So that's the experiment on calorim calorimetry. And now we'll look at a couple of questions. Question 6. The correct value for the heat of combustion of ethanol is 1,367 kilojoules per mole. The students' results show a heat of combustion of 254 kilojoules per mole. How could they improve on the accuracy of their results? Now, thinking about this, the, the main reason that probably they've got such a low value is from a draft and inconsistencies in the atmosphere. So lowering the flask closer to the flame would ensure that more of the heat energy is released from that is released in the combustion reaction is transferred to the calorimeter. Okay? So our answer to that one would be to lower the flask. But another way that they could improve the accuracy would be to make sure that they had a really good draft barrier. So perhaps use more than one to stop that draft because they might be next to a window perhaps that's open. And question seven, the following table shows the students' results and the accepted values for the molar heat of combustion of these two alcohols used, methanol and ethanol. So as you can see, their values are quite a bit lower than accepted values. So which of the following statements could form part of an acceptable conclusion? Okay, there's quite a few ideas there. Our experiment failed, we must have done something wrong. Now, when you're doing science, and specifically chemistry, you can't give an answer like that. Experiments have to be explained. So, the majority of those answers, uh, the students aren't thinking hard enough about why this experiment got the results they did. So our answer is gonna be C. Although our results were inaccurate, this method still can be used to make valid comparisons of the relative values of alkanols. So if you see that uh, methanol has, for the accepted values, has a lower, uh, a lower molar heat of combustion than ethanol, and even though their values are a lot lower altogether, they still have that same trend. So that's a really good conclusion. Question eight. The students measured the molar heat of combustion of methanol three times and obtained the following results. So they have pretty similar results. Now, identify an acceptable statement based on these results, okay? Now, these results were reliable because they are within a very close range. So part A, it says they were not reliable because they consistently gave very low values. But they were actually reliable because they're very close to each other. Now looking at B, the results are inaccurate so they are not reliable. That's true, the results are inaccurate because they're not like the acceptable results, but this doesn't make them unreliable. Now validity, where it mentions validity, it actually refers to the experimental method or to the statement about the result. So the method actually was valid, they've got fairly consistent results. So our answer for this one is going to be the results obtained for methanol are reliable because they are consistent. So that wraps up the discussion about calorimetry and how to measure the molar heats of combustion in the laboratory. And in the next lesson, I'll be talking about how we use ethanol for fuel. Thank you.